Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to episode 9, I think, of the buttons. It'll be in the title. Look at these little fluff butts. They all wore their, their Phyllis Dillers. They're starting to get, uh, they're starting to get mohawks on their little heads. You can see the feathers coming in on tops of their heads, especially that one right there. The, that one, you can really see it. Very cute. Terrified, of course. But, gotta get them used to me. They're getting better about it. It just takes them a long time, it seems. They do not like being handled at all. So I try to handle them uh, at minimum. So it's the Saturday Summary. And for this week, I can say that these guys have grown a ton. Um, we started eight or nine days ago, whichever whichever episode this is, and uh, these guys are doing great. They're, I guess it would be nine. Yeah, it should be nine. They're, uh, they're as far as I can tell, they're doing great. I just checked butts for any kind of pasty butt or anything. There's none of that going on. I also checked butts because I'm interested in uh, in uh, figuring out if they're boys or girls. And I read many, many things on a lot of Facebook groups and in different forums. And there's many different, uh, I guess, like, there's a, there's controversy as to how you can definitely tell if they're male or female. Now, of course, if they lay an egg, obviously they're female. Um... But the other, there's two other things that I saw that kept popping up as, um, you know, possible ways to, to tell, or three, actually. Okay, so one of them is, um, like, they start getting a rosy color to their feathers. Like, if you see this right here, but they said that this isn't usually until about three weeks, and these guys are just over two weeks old. But that guy is getting some rosy feathers, as opposed to this one that's going, like, all gray. So, um, I was looking at that. So, the other thing that they said is that they will have, like, um, their feathers around their vent, their butthole, will be dark. Or their, I think that's what everyone was referring to. Um, I just checked all of their butts, and none of them have, like darker butts than the other so I don't know if that I don't I don't I guess I don't understand what they were talking about with that but um, the other thing is once they get to be about four to six weeks old the colors under their chins will start changing and those feathers sometimes sometimes not on all um, they will develop a beard and that will indicate that they're male if they if they have like a like a different colored chest or like just under their um, under their chin there's like a, a stripe that comes out there so um, those are the three ways that I saw the biggest ways that people were talking about as far as determining other than just visually seeing them lay an egg um, so I'm thinking this little one right here might be a boy because of the rosy color that's coming out in the feathers. Um, we'll have to wait and see, though. So it's just one of those things, I think. Just a wait and see. But uh, so that's where we currently are. We are uh, currently in this enclosure. I took out the other little water bu water bowl because it was um, it was just going dry too fast, and they just kept pooping in it. And this is much easier. I can just sit this in the sink and just run my sprayer in it and not have to empty it every time I need to clean it out. Very, very handy. Um, I do need to change out this bedding though because I did notice that it's getting quite damp and I don't want them to have any damage to their little feetsies. So um, their food though, however, I got some of these, um, give me just a second, let me grab the bag here, it's right here, hold on. Hold on, we will observe the beautiful screen top the upper management made for me. Okay, so I got these, right? Dried mealworms. We got uh, protein rich, it's very true. I think they're like, yeah. We got uh, 
50% crude protein, 25% fat, crude fiber. Then these guys need a, an extremely high um, protein diet when they're when they're BBs. And then once they start laying eggs, you can decrease that. If you give them too much protein or too, if they don't have enough calcium, um, they can have trouble laying eggs. Uh, but so what I did is I took like um, maybe a cup of those dry, dried mealworms and put it in a little Ziploc and took my rolling pin and crushed them up really, really fine. And then um, I mixed it into the corn mash stuff that she had given me. So it, it kind of, and, and it, of course, because it went into like little crumbles, you can see the darker specks there. That's all mealworms, crushed up mealworms. It darkened the, turned it into like this. It almost looks like brown sugar now. But uh, they love it. I mean, they absolutely love it. I, I've noticed that they seem to, they seem to uh, really enjoy it, and uh, I think they're doing well. I think they're doing very well. So that's where we are now, as far as where we're going. Well, um, I love these little guys. I wish they were more friendly. I've, I've watched many videos that say that the larger quail breeds, like the Caternix, <laughs> I think I said it right, and I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't even have a, a cheat sheet, like I'm not, I, it, because for a long time there I had to actually see the word Caternix, a Caternix quail, there's the bobwhite quail, um, those are the bigger breeds, um, the bobwhite quails, I could act, they live around here, like they're native to this area. They, uh, so, you know, I could repopulate the area with bobwhite quails because I don't, well, I'm sure there's still plenty. They're starting to get cold because they're huddled up. But I wanted everyone to see their colors. They're really, really starting to feather up really nicely. Like I said, they're about two and a half weeks old and they're really, the featherage is real. So if you guys are familiar with quails and you know of any breeds that are nice and friendly and easy to like domesticate or at least get them to where they don't scatter and run like you're the jolly green giant that just came in to like stomp on their forest, um, you know, that that would be good. I, I love these little guys. I, I'm not, I, I don't want to get rid of them or anything because they're scared, but um, I just, uh, I would like something a little more, a little more user friendly. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm I'm hoping that with time these guys will will chill out. They they have started to calm down a lot. Um, I will say I'm being very brave, leaving this lid off like this because these they take off and fly so quick. They are speedy, 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 and. Uh, they, when they land, they take off again, and it's very, they're very hard to catch. So, being very brave, trusting. They get startled. When, when these little guys get startled, they fly straight up into the air. They, uh, and then they just hover and just kind of flood around wherever they land. They, <sighs> terrifying. When the dogs are in the house, terrifying. So, depending on how this goes, um, since the quails are so small and they are so easy to house and um, somewhat cost effective, I'm thinking about uh, looking at the larger quails and there's a lot more nutrition in quail eggs from what I understand. Sometimes, I know with duck eggs, um, if you substitute duck eggs for egg eggs, like chicken eggs, um, in your diet regularly, like you don't eat chicken eggs, you just eat duck eggs, it can kind of mess with you a little bit because it does have a very extremely high protein content. Um, I'm sure the same, the same could be said for quail eggs. Too much of anything is not good, right? Even money. Don't say, oh, but money. No, even money. Too much money is not a good thing. So, um, <laughs> just enough is the same as a feast, right? That's what I try to tell myself, because apparently my role in this role-playing game is to be a, a poor white girl <laughs> from Appalachia. And that's fine. Songs have been written about people like me. I'm good to go. All right, guys. 
we're going to wrap it up. Thank you for sticking around. Um, thank you, 108 subscribers. I do greatly appreciate it. If you haven't done so, please go and hit the little subscribe button. I'm on my march to get a thousand subscribers so we can expand this little operation. We can, uh, get monetized. I also have to have a certain amount of viewing hours. I'm sure anybody familiar with YouTube that knows all this, but you have to have a certain amount of viewing hours and you have to have a thousand subscribers. So it's 4,000 viewing hours. But, uh, you know, if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. C'est la vie. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Peace out, y'all.